I'm Cheryl. I've been taking photographs of toys for about 10 years now with my Lens Baby lenses, maybe, maybe four or five years. I really love the Lens Baby lenses because they allow me to blur the lines between photography and painting. And what that allows me to do is take something like this and make it look like this. So before we get out to the field, I want to just kind of go over my equipment really quick because I have a feeling that once I get in the flow of taking photos, I'm not going to talk about what I'm doing and why I'm doing as much as you probably want to know. So I'm just going to take a moment here and just review my equipment, the lenses I use and why I use them. So the, my, my favorite lens and this is this setup basically. I call it one lens because basically I think of it as one lens. It, this is the Composer Pro 2 and what is unique about it is it has sits on this ball and socket and I guess apparatus for better for no better word and I can move the the glass, the lens around on my frame and focus it in different ways and create different effects as as and the combination with f-stop i can do all sorts of crazy things so i love this flexibility and then this is my my basic setup which is the composer pro 2 with a sweet 35 with a macro converter plus eight millimeter and i need that because my toys that i'm photographing are are small so they're really basically on the macro scale so I'll need a converter for, or some sort of macro attachment for all my lenses. So that's my setup, and this is where I start with pretty much all of my scenes that I have going here. And also this is where I get all my motion, is with this setup. So if you see a photo that I've done that has a lot of edge blur, it looks like the figures are flying, or there's a lot of movement, or a spaceship is taking off, that kind of thing. It's I, I get that with, the, with Sweet 35 on the Composer Pro 2. So that's where I start. And then I'm like, okay, well, that's great. I love what I got there, but now I want to try something a little bit different. Then I'll almost always go with the Edge 50, which has a built-in macro, which I love. And this is just a really super fun lens. Took me a little while to get used to this one, but I like the soft edge effect. I like the, the bokeh it gets on the, on the edges. I like the, uh, um, has a great lens flare. I can also sort of, uh, play with my plane of focus so it goes front to back in the frame rather than just across the front from the front surface so which is nice to kind of get a, an idea of uh, focus stacking without actually focus stacking so this is a super handy lens I love to play with the edge 50 and then if I'm looking for something a little bit different I'll go with a twist 60 which I just love how it just curves the bokeh around the edge of the frame I just love the soft focus aspects of it it's just it's just a beautiful lens super fun to play with and then I've been sort of messing around with my Sweet 50, which I don't use as much as I used to, but I put the 16 millimeter macro converter on it so I can get a more of a close up of my scenes and sort of play with how much they're filling the frame. I just wanted to try something a little bit different for a while. So that's a nice compromise, a, a actually a really good change of pace from the Sweet 35, which usually the figure is off to a corner and there's a lot more of the scene. And then if I move to this the 50 with the macro converter, I can get a little bit more of a, a close in, a little more intimate portrait of whatever the action is. So these are my these are my my babies. These are my favorite lenses, and this is what I go out with every time when I'm going on um, a photo adventure or even when I'm traveling. This is my setup. When we get into the field and we're out at the park. I tend to work really fast and it's really hard to show what I'm doing with the toys. I thought I would take a couple minutes and show you how I set up my toys before I actually go out on any adventure. I spend a couple hours out here in my studio and I put all my toys together. And these are the different methods that I've used and use on a pretty regular basis to make my toys stay where I want them to stay, fly through the air, um, hang, whatever it is that I'm doing. So for a water shot, I'll generally use some clear Lego brick and I'll set that up and that's about pretty standard for a, for a puddle depth and I have my, my setup right here and then on this one I already have my little narwhal I've had him set up in so he can move around so I can make sure that I get my two figures so they can actually look at each other and they're at a nice distance.
And this one here, I wanted them a little bit farther apart. And I know that when they're in the water, I want the mom, the little mommy bunny to be a little higher than the sun. And he's a little bit farther out in the water. So I've set that up already. And then I've got this, this little guy here that I've, from past experience, I know that with the lens baby blur, especially with a Sweet 50, this little brick setup can disappear pretty quickly. Um, in addition to that, I will do things like do things like hot glue little accessories together so they don't fall apart in the when I'm out in the field. I'll set up scenes like this so that I know what I want to do. And I'll put a, one of these trans clear bars on the back. And then this I'll be able to, with the help of a uh, hand clamp, get her up off the air on a stump and get her look like she's flying through the air, which is a pretty, pretty good trick. And then this also will disappear with, a, with that Lens Baby patented blur that I like so much. Um, in addition to that, I've got a couple other little little fun things I thought I would try out. I made a little swing for Batman. I thought that might be kind of fun. And I'll be looking for some nice, beautiful fall foliage to hang him from, because I thought that might be nice. And all pink shot, because Batman, normally you see him, he's all black. And I like to be a little subversive with my toy choices. And then just something that's a little bit fun for me. One of my favorite figures, a little Chima bird with a little blue teddy bear. Um, I'm pretty, really hot glue and Lego is great. So here's a setup that I've done in the past where the stormtrooper is all, looks like he's at the top of a, of a jump. But basically I've ripped him apart and hot glued him back together. And when I put that in front of a lens, all of that is just blurs together and the viewer's eye doesn't, it's crazy. They don't see all the kind of modifications I've made. And then there, here's another classic Batman and Joker concept that I did. And you can see that there's an awful lot of glue and hot tack on little hot glue and some tack on that. But by the time you get that in front of a camera, all that disappears leaving very little editing on my end, which is nice. Just in time for Halloween or any time of the year, Frank is uh, Frankenstein is gonna go fishing. I want this all set up. I've In past experience, I know that light moves pretty quickly on the macro level. So I always wanna make sure all my scenes are set up before I get out there. So I can really maximize the light when I find it. So I'm going to try it again. So here, this is it. The problem with this particular setup is pretty finicky. And if it holds together when we're out in the field, I'll be impressed. That'll be a little goober I'll have to take out and post, but that's not bad. One thing that's great about toy photography is there are so many toys available to choose as your muse, your subject, whatever it is that you want to star in your photography. I personally chose Lego for not only its connection to my family, but because it's, it's common around the world. It's very flexible. You can mix and match the parts and everyone has a connection to Lego, or at least most people do. They either grew up with it or their kids play with it, or they've had some connection to it somewhere in this universe. And if not the toy specifically, many of the characters that are now available as Lego minifigs. And that flexibility allows me to layer meaning on my photography. And it's a really quick connection to my viewer. And it's a toy that doesn't take itself too seriously. And to me, that's really, really important because for me, toy photography is about fun. It's about silliness. It's about bringing joy to myself as well as the viewer and just having a good time. So for me, Lego is, is my primary muse. I hope you've enjoyed that little overview of my kind of getting ready process and how I choose my toys and get them set up and what I'm going to do in the field. So now I'm going to take a minute, I'm going to get everything packed up. And I just want you to know that all of this stuff can be done at your, at your home, 
in your house, in your garden, at your local park. I personally need to go to my park because it's the only place that has a puddle. And as we reviewed, several of my scenes all require uh, a really good, a nice shallow mud puddle. So that's what we're gonna go off and go find. So I'm gonna take a minute and pack up my toys and then we'll head to the park. So see you there. Hey, we made it, we made it to the park, woohoo! Are you ready for some toy photography fun? I know I am, because every day is better when you get out your camera and some toys and take some photos. So I have my first setup, and the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go find a puddle. And I guess that's why I always come back to this park is because I'm pretty much always guaranteed I'm gonna find a puddle somewhere. Something about this little family of beavers are always sort of sculpting the swamp and I'm always finding even in the driest of seasons a little bit of water but you can do toy photography wherever you're comfortable in your own yard in your home your local park whatever works for you so are you ready let's go have some toy photography fun growing up in the Pacific Northwest water has always been important in my work and I seem to have gravitated towards that with my toys which I find very amusing some things are very consistent, and I love the reflection. I love the movement that you can get. At least it makes appear as if the toys are moving when the water is moving, so you get a little sense of realism. It's also incredibly pleasant, and photography for me is a relaxing hobby, so being around water is just part of that process. It's amazing how a lens baby lens can just take a dirty old mud puddle that looks like heck and actually make it look like you just entered some sort of magical world. It's not completely blown out like the sweet will do when it's wide open. Those edges get just a little bit crazy. So this one I get a little bit of that edge swirl, but I still maintain a that the, the objects are recognizable. And it's always finding that, that line between recognizable and abstraction. Now, just for fun, because that looked pretty good, is what was it gonna look like with an edge? Because sometimes it's just a matter of just experimenting, swapping these out. Now what this one does is, because I can move the composer around, what I can do is create an effect where both the cat and Frankenstein are in focus and everything else is blurry. It can just change my, my line of focus and do that look in camera rather than doing it in post, which I like that freedom. It was a good, it was good. I like Frank fishing, looks good. Now I'm gonna, remember those other scenes that I had in my, at the, in my studio? So I've got all my water ones in one place and now I'm going to see if I can transform this mud puddle into something magical that you might find Unicorn Fairy Princess in with a little narwhal. We'll see if we can make that work. I like that. So basically what I've done is I'm using the reflections of the sky to help frame the scene. So their reflection is in the center. Uh, all right. What happens if I do a serious blurring? I like to just play with the lenses and see what I get. It's always fun. Sometimes you hit on something really different. All right. I've got my little setup here, which is uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu and a frog. And I've taken this photo before, but I wasn't really happy with it. So I wanted to try it again, adding the frogs this time. Because if you've anybody has seen the TV show, you know that the Grogu has this thing about eating stuff. So I thought the joke would be fun to stick a little frog off on the edge. So now I'm going to add a little motion. And I'm going to try this shot a couple different ways. And because I'm not really sure if I'm going to like the Sweet 35 or the Edge 50 with this. I have found from past experience that slight change in angle is the difference between having your toys look believable or have them look like just plastic toys. And since my goal is to make it look like my toys have come to life, I like to have that flexibility of being able to move around 360 or at least 180 my toys and see what 
what's going to look the best. Oh, I like that. I stopped it down to F4. Normally I like to shoot wide open, but I just wanted to really make sure that I get this right because I really like, like this setup. A little bit of motion in the water. Okay, so now I like what I saw with the with that edge, but wonder what would happen if I if I swapped out and went with a slightly different lens. A Sweet 35 has also been a good optic for me for this sort of photo, so give a little bit different motion blur to it. Now this one I'm going to have to move my sweet spot of focus way down into that right hand corner to really pick up our figure. And one of the things we try to do with our, at least I try to do with my toys, is to make it feel as if you're catching them in a moment, a uh, little bit of a, of a private moment or capturing them in some way that you're intruding on their secret life and kind of a little, I guess a little voyeuristic and a lot of my scenes sort of feel like you've just captured them in an in un unsuspecting moment, private moment. Being around water is very peaceful, so choosing to photograph toys around water just sort of adds to that sort of peace and serenity when I try to bring that, that, that emotion into my toy photos. So this is a photo I took a long time ago, this setup, um, when I was first starting out. And I thought about it like, ah, this would be an interesting experiment. I wonder what it would look like taken with a lens baby lens. Ah, not bad. Not bad for a first effort. Do a little quick swap out. Wow, totally different look. Totally different look. That's interesting. Well, at least nice reflection, though. I love that about the water. Yeah, it looks really nice. Really nice. That's what's great about that edge. It keeps me so I don't have to do focus stacking down the road. I have this running joke of uh, the, the Mandalorian, if you're not familiar, is just a character that Disney Plus came up with a couple years ago. And it's sort of a Star Wars tangential storyline. And there's a Baby Yoda. And I... He's just so cute. Everyone loves him. So, but toy photography is all about puns and jokes and humor. So I made myself a little Pandalorian. I also really like photographing straight into the sun. I know that's really bad for on many reasons, but part of that is I enjoy a good lens flare and you're going to be more inclined to get that if you're wide open with a, or at least a, shooting into the sun. So I know that when you look at this, it's, uh, the, si the, the situation seems really pedestrian. Well, some grass, some leaves, some dirt, not very interesting, right? But I have found that it doesn't take much to just really create something magical when you throw a little lens blur, a little lens flare, and some crazy toys, and next thing you know, you're just like somewhere else. God light. Isn't that what they call that? Little God light? And that's my secret weapon. Sweet 35, secret weapon. Gotta love it. Makes everything better. Much like Bob Ross, I really ascribe to the idea that photography is whatever you want it to be. Your art, your creativity is whatever makes you happy. People will judge, people always judge, but you should always stick to, to your guns, do what it is that you want to do, create the, the magic, the images, the photography that you want to create. And I, I love that about Lens Baby. Their lenses, their product inspires me to think differently, approach my photography differently, and create images that I'm happy with. Images that bring me joy so and then also we love Bob Ross and his happy little accidents and I think that is also a big part of my joy and the appeal of Lens Baby is that I can capture those happy accidents and there we go just a little bit of fun 
never want to take ourselves too seriously. That's the thing about toy photography. You definitely can't take yourself seriously. So since my figures are pretty small in, in the toy photography world, I'm always looking for situations that scale well with the figures. And I have found that moss and things like fairy grass and, and just smaller scaled backgrounds and foregrounds and are tend to work a little bit better with these figures. So I'm always looking for a little bit of grass, a little bit of a short grass or moss, lichens great, uh, alpine flowers, anything on the small side. And it tends to scale better with the figures and create that illusion that I'm looking for that these figures are in their own environment. So I moved over from the Edge 50 to a uh, Twist 60. Again, wide open, because I just want to see if I can get a little bit of a uh, little bit of different look in the background and what that what that might look like. Because I really like a creamy bokeh background. And now I've got my scene framed by the foreground grass on the other side, which makes it for me anyway, it feels like I just have accidentally stumbled across Mr. Ross out in plain air painting and it's just a nice look. So we've got this crazy biker here doing some awesome wheelie. Background's nice. Leaves with the light behind him could make some good bokeh. I'll add a little foreground light and I don't know, I'm gonna get my lens baby Sweet 35 out and see what kind of magic I can create. Let's see if I can make it look like she's flying through the air. So one of the ways that I like to help sell the idea that my figures are alive is getting below them because if you can shoot up, photograph up at a minifigure, just get below them a little bit, they tend to feel a little more lifelike, a little larger than life. So I tend to get low in this particular situation on the stump allows me to photograph and angle up at my subject. So now I'm moving my sweet spot of focus around in such a way that it's right on her, and then I get maximum blur everywhere else. I'm actually doing like a little fun jump off the log. So now I'm gonna just angle a little bit differently on my position on it. And then with enough blur, it's going to make removing that little stem really easy. Yeah, I like that. It's a fun, just a fun shot. Sometimes it's hard to see exactly how much I angle my composer part, but that's when I'm going for maximum blur, maximum motion in my photos, I'm moving that composer pro as far angling it far into any direction as that I can get it to maximize that blur and then really focus on just one area so I'm guiding my viewers eyes right to where I want them usually the face because for me that's just I know it's a, I'm just weird about wanting to have the face in focus other people have their own idea of what's important I, I understand that not everything needs to be in focus it's really a creative choice but that's what I do is I angle this into one of the four corners for maximum blur, and then just one little spot of focus right where their face is. So when you start taking photos of toys, you're gonna to realize there are a lot, a lot, a lot of toys out there. Uh, if, it's a, if, if it's connected to pop culture, or if it's a movie or a TV show, there's a toy that's associated with that. And gotta make choices about what kind of stories you wanna tell, and it is fun to sort of mix up your own stories and your own ideas and mix those with pop culture. Uh, but it's also important to choose choices that are meaningful and important to you. So this is a, a, this is a little Chima bird. It's from a, a Lego line that was discontinued a few years back. And I have to say, it's not the most popular of Lego properties, but it's one that I enjoy and it makes me happy and I tend to photograph these a lot and I always make sure that I in any of the scenes when I go out I make sure I have a mix of toys that I know that are going to be popular with my viewers and my audience but also toys that bring me joy and happiness and that's what this one is all about and also this one is a uh, is the little bird is holding a little bear and 
once you've been photographing or as an artist, you end up developing a language and props and sort of uh, symbols that are important to you that tell your stories. And for me, the bear represents childhood, both imagined and real. And so I, anytime you see a little bear in any of my photos, it's alluding just the idea of childhood and safety and innocence and security, but also a little bit of terror and um, fear because it's all, it's all tied in the same. So I'm going to try this one with two different lenses, the Sweet 35 for a little blur and also the Twist 60 and have no idea which one is going to be better and create the look I'm looking for. I really like the Twist 60 because it's giving me a little bit more focus with both uh, for both the bird's face and the teddy bear. There's not as much um, lens effect even at wide open. So since toys are, are basically designed for children, they tend to be pretty brightly colored and I try to simplify those color choices like with the Chima bird, he's got the blue bear. Because I could have gone with a brown bear or a black bear or a striped bear. I mean, it's like Lego's got so many different colors of bears. With the Batman, I was looking for a red tree because I really wanted to bring the just the whole composition together. And I think that's also why I like to do black and white with toys is also it's just eliminate color, get back to composition, and really focus on the subject and let everything else sort of sort of fall away because sometimes we just rely too much on color. So with toys, since they are so brightly colored and especially with Lego, you've got yellow faces and everything is just primary colors. It's nice to just sort of back that off and softened up a little bit so that the color isn't the first thing that the viewer sees. They can get past that a little bit and see the story that you're trying to tell. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed taking a deep dive into my creative process. More than important to me though, is I hope you are inspired to pick up your own toys and your lens baby lenses and go out and create your own toy photography magic. It's super fun. It's, uh, it's a wonderful way to, to use your photography skills and create your own, your own uh, toy magic. A big thank you to everyone at Lens Baby for the invitation to come and share my photography process with you. I really appreciate that. It's my greatest joy to share toy photography and inspire other people to join me and, uh, on this crazy toy photography, creating world, storytelling journey that I'm on. It's all are welcome. If you have any questions about me, my process, toys, photography, the intersection of lens baby and toy photography, come look me up at ShellyCorbett.com. I'm happy to help you and get you started on this fun, amazing journey. Until next time, play well.